my great grandparents are from Sri Lanka. So my grandparents were born in Malaysia. My parents are Malaysians and they are born and bred in Melaka. My, my siblings are all born and bred in Melaka as well. But at that time, uh, Melaka didn't really have a, a college that was doing CLP. So I had to come to Kuala Lumpur. And of course, prospects of work is better in the capital. So I decided to stay on in uh, Kuala Lumpur and also work as a lawyer. And then uh, it was only during my, my time in uh, Bar Council that I got involved in uh, migration issues. During my stint there, I think it was a good opportunity for, for me to learn, gain knowledge about the migration. And I felt that that group was a very vulnerable group, but they had so much to um, contribute to Malaysia and they were contributing so much to Malaysia, economic-wise, uh, building the nation. But I felt that they were not appreciated and uh, their problems were things that we could actually help uh, resolve. So I left Bar Council in January 2018, uh, went back into practice and then set up this, uh, uh, our journey as well to provide the legal representation. During the pandemic, we saw many of them uh, getting infected but not, not having access to medical and was too afraid to reveal that they were infected as well. Some PPVs were not willing to vaccinate those without documents. So the migrants were also afraid to go there and get the vaccination. MRC had, had a mobile vaccination where they could go to the migrant. So we, all we had to do was um, mobilise the migrants into one area, uh, get their particulars down and then bring MRCS into that area to do the vaccination. The role of the migrant leaders were extremely, extremely important because uh, we were in touch with the migrant leaders and we gave all the information that the migrant leaders needed but they were instrumental in convincing their migrant community to come forward and take the vaccination. Language is always a problem when it comes to dealing with migrants. So you needed someone who spoke their language at the vaccination centre. And this is where the migrant community leaders stepped in. They also did a lot of the uh, looking for the buses, caterers, looking for the area where we're going to uh, vaccinate. And it's not easy because they have to convince the community they have to give the right information. They got to get their, uh, get them to come for the, come to the PPV and get the vaccination. So definitely, the migrant leaders played a very, very big role in the success. I think there was many, many memorable moments. But I think one of it that really stuck with me was when we went to Curling, uh, and and it was very, very remote area. Most of the migrants were agricultural, um, from the agricultural sector. When we went there, they provided the uh, food. Uh, you know, they cooked uh, f from fresh uh, vegetables from the garden, from the, from the farms. They were so happy that we came to give them the services, but I think it was the other way around. We were so happy to be amongst them, uh, to, to, to provide that services for them. For me, professionally, home is where I have the opportunity to interact with the migrants in their own setting. Just sitting there and listening to them and looking at how they interact, or even, in, even if I don't understand the language sometimes, uh, it makes me really happy and I know that uh, they feel at ease and, and so do I.